There we go. Thank you. Okay, and I'll start the the show, the the, the presentation. I think everyone should have that. A good evening, everyone. Uh, good late afternoon here on the West Coast. Um, we're starting our third class for med medical astrology. And uh, 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 this week, we're going to focus on uh, two areas of astrology that are uh, often uh, overlooked, or two aspects of astrology that are often overlooked, or their significance is minimized, right? And these are, I mentioned uh, last week, the importance of the semi-square and sesquisquare aspects. And I'll also uh, talk tonight about parallel aspects. And I know in uh, it's common in contemporary astrology that people don't put as much emphasis on those as they do to the, you know, to oppositions and squares and trines and, and so on, conjunctions. And uh, I'm, I'm going to demonstrate uh, how in some charts, if you don't use those, you can't practice medical astrology, right? You can't explain the disease unless you use those. So uh, I, I mentioned I've done a, a, a large number of charts, a few hundred charts kind of in depth, looking for the significators of the disease and or the, the timing of the onset of the disease. And, um, uh, and what I found is that in some of those, the 45 degree aspect, the 135 degree aspect or the parallels are essential to find the underlying uh, 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 stresses in the constitution uh, or the frame and or to find the timing. Right? So that's that's the preview and uh, we'll get, I'll, I'll get right to it. Here. We have um, parallels in hermetic medical astrology. And I'll reiterate, I, I, when, when uh, the first class I was talking about, well, why did we study medical astrology? Well, obviously we want to help with our health and, and uh, help understand the nature of certain afflictions, what we might do from practical measures to alchemical uh, measures in order to modify uh, the, the course of those discords. And, um, but uh, also uh, medical astrology is a proving ground for the principles of astrology, right? And uh, like I say, you can have your theory about, you know, uh, whether the zero of Aries uh, is at, um, at uh, I mean, whether a zero of Aries starts at the spring equinox or whether it starts somewhere else, but there won't be any doubt if the person has <laughs> uh, Mars in Sagittarius and they broke their leg, right? They broke their upper leg, right? Uh, there's no question about which system. You need to use the system that has margins, Mars and Sagittarius there. So, and I like to say, so this, it's like a proving ground and principles we find here in medical astrology, which have a definite expression in the body and in the health. Well, those principles are going to apply to all our chart delineation. So I'll put it out there. We need to be using the semi-squares, the sesqui squares and the parallels also for our just general chart delineation for our other other uh, uh, aspects of astrology uh, that, that we use. And um, so I, I'll demonstrate uh, here. So, so my charts here, uh, just a, a quick review. What is a, a parallel? Um, we have a, a parallel. We have here the, the circle of the ecliptic, right? This would be the circle of the zodiac around here and but then we have the the uh it's called the the uh the celestial e equator and uh, they are not aligned and uh if so for instance the sun may be uh here in spring equinox and it's at spring equinox, but it's it's not above or below the ecliptic, right? But by the time you get to the summer solstice, you'll say, well, the sun is in uh, a zero of Cancer, right? Except it's 23 degrees uh, south in its declination down there, right? So the 
as the sun, sun or other planets move around the zodiac like this, they are also moving north and south and north and south of the ecliptic in that way. So the parallel is when they're in the same degree, north or south, that would be the parallel. Um, and the, we use the term contraparallel, say if something is 15 degrees north and something else is 15 degrees south, we uh, call that a contraparallel. Um, but so, so this is what we're, we're measuring here. So the thing is intuitively, it's easy to see if the planets are in a horse race <laughs> going around the ecliptic, it's easy to see the significance of a conjunction because the two horses are side by side on the racetrack, right? Uh, it's easy to see that or square, it's easy to see that. It's less easy intuitively to grasp the possible significance of something being equally north or equally south of, of the equator there. So um, I'm gonna show, uh, I'll show some charts here and show the value and sometimes some case the essential importance of including them in some delineations. All right. um, classically, uh, we allow uh, in a natal chart, we allow one degree of orb in declination for natal aspects. Okay. And classically, in our current evolution of our hermetic astrology, we use one degree of orb also for progressions. Okay. Now, in uh, some charts in the study that, that, uh, that I'm going to present in, in my larger study, some charts, the correct astrological indications are absent if the natal parallels are ignored. Okay. And uh, not many. I, my naive guess would be 5% of charts. The, the, uh, the parallels tell the story when it's, it doesn't have other indicators. Um, in, uh, I, solely, okay. In some charts, the timing of the illness can't be demonstrated unless you use the progressed parallels. Okay, I'll show you some examples of these. Uh, here, before we proceed, uh, while I was doing this work, I came up with a couple of questions that I think um, in our hermetic system as it stands today, I think there are two questions we have about parallels. And uh, one of them is uh, we have the terms parallel and contraparallel. So uh, parallel, they would be the same number of degrees either north or the same number of degrees south, they'd be parallel. Uh, contraparallel, they would be the same number of degrees north as south. So here's something might be 23 degrees north and another planet is 23 degrees north, they're parallel. But here, planet is 23 degrees north, another one's 23 degrees south. We call that a contraparallel. Now in our system, as it's in our, our lessons and in the writings, as far as I can tell, that these are treated identically. The parallel and the contraparallel are treated um, identically and we don't um, assign uh, discordant energy to a, a contraparallel. Um, and uh, if, if, I'm, if I'm wrong about that, I, I would I'd appreciate it if somebody would let me know. <laughs> but uh, that's what I find in our, in our lessons and delineations. And this is the way it is in uh, the Horoscope 2020 program uh, treats it that way. So um, uh, this is a question for research. Does the contraparallel add discordant energy? Right. So I invite future generations to <laughs> explore that question and try to answer it one way or another. The other one, uh, this is, uh, I while examining these, I saw some charts, and I'm gonna include one in here that is just stunning, right? That sometimes extremely close progressed uh, uh, parallels, like, I mean, within one minute of a degree, right? Will be the trigger for something. And you see it's striking, not within one, not within 60 minutes of a degree, but within one or two or three or four minutes of a degree, it will sometimes be a striking indicator in a chart. And uh, that led me to ask the question, um, we think about, this is for, for future research, we have, a, let's just say we have a conjunction and for, in a natal chart, we may allow like 12 degrees for a conjunction, but only one degree <laughs> for a progression to that. Uh, to, to a conjunction, right? Well, here, if we're allowing only one degree for the natal parallel, why do we allow the full one degree for the progression? Maybe it should be <laughs> uh, a 12th of a degree, right? 
for the progression. Uh, if people understand, give me a little nod if you understand the point I'm making, um, that um, the, uh, the proportionally, and uh, I think this may be why sometimes uh, parallels may get kind of a bad name or the, because there can be so many of them and we wonder about the significance. And I wonder if we were using shorter orbs for them for progression for the significance, if, uh, if it might be more clear how important they are. So I'll show you some, uh, three cases here where, where they're important. But um, so these are, I present these questions uh, for, for research. Um, and uh, here I'm gonna give a, an example chart. Uh, this man is, is Sam Francis. He, he's one of the most famous and wealthiest um, American painter, artists, I believe he's, he's passed away. But I think his paintings have sold for a million dollars, right? And uh, he, uh, but uh, he started out in his life as an Air Force test pilot, right? And uh, he uh, had an airplane crash and broke his back. And uh, it was while uh, lying in bed with a broken back that he took up painting. Um, I, I love to use examples here of people who had a hardship and uh, a real hardship and turned a negative into a positive, right? And it actually became they were able to fulfill their calling because of the energy they had that came to overcome the, the negativity. So many of my charts, I've preferred to <laughs> select charts where, where people had something to overcome. Uh, but here uh, we need to use uh, his, his natal and progress parallels. And uh, here's the, our, our chart. And uh, we can start with, oh, just a minute. Uh, we can start with, okay, he had an airplane accident. I'm not going to worry about the airplane, right? He had a, a lifelong spinal injury, right? So the spine is ruled by Leo, right? And, uh, and by Leo and by its ruler, the sun. This is where the influences coming into the spine will come from. And uh, we also expect for the, for, uh, to see both indicated natally for Mars to have some uh, some aspect there to Leo or the Sun uh, for this this kind of, of traumatic injury, and we might also expect uh, Saturn to be involved in uh, with uh, because of the uh, uh, severity of the injury and the permanent disability of that. Um, so uh, well, uh, so let's look for these. Let's see what do we see here, uh, and in the chart, I, I, I've drawn in the. Kind of the the reds are the discords here, and uh, this this darker line is also a discord. <laughs> I don't know why it's not red, um, but uh, you can see if we let's just start and we're going to look at Leo, right? What what is the discord in Leo that might indicate a spinal injury? And here we have uh, Neptune is the only planet in Leo, okay? And uh, Neptune here has a a square. And the square is over here to Jupiter and the moon. Okay. Now, I will just put it out here. It's my opinion that Neptune square to Jupiter and the moon is not sufficient to break somebody's back. Right? <laughs> we, those are pretty soft planets, right? There can be something going on there, you know, with the heart or heart disease or down here with the reproductive system. But um, that's not enough to break somebody's back. Okay. And so we're going to look also, uh, the, the Leo takes energy from the sun. And here we have the sun. And um, the sun uh, here is, uh, certainly has, has stressors. The sun is uh, conjunct to Pluto. That, that's, a, that's neutral. Uh, the sun is, uh, it's a little, it's because it's in a cadent house here. It's, this is a weak house. It's a little wide. It's not actually conjunct to Mars there. Um, Okay, and uh, but and it is uh, square to the midheaven, and uh, I I would just like to say <laughs> uh, I don't think that's sufficient discordant energy like for a, a dramatic serious spinal injury right sudden spirit. Okay, um, we do have here an aspect between these two. This is the planet in Leo and the Sun, and these have a semi square, right. So uh, these are tied together. The sun is tied in not only by rulership of Leo, right? But it uh, aspects uh, discordant 
uh, aspect uh, aspect characterized by friction, right? And uh, and uh, so um, uh, there there we have that. Now, <laughs> okay, uh, just one second. Here, uh, let's look here. I'd like to uh, look at the parallels here. Uh, the natal sun here is 23 north 25. <laughs> natal Mars is 23 north 27. <laughs> this is an extremely close parallel, right? So if we don't look at the parallels, we might not notice this. And this would be the equivalent overlooking of overlooking a very close Sun-Mars conjunction, like within one degree of each other, right? That would be a very prominent aspect if it were a conjunction, right? So here we have, okay, there, and these are, that's in the 12th. By progressions, these are released by uh, progressed parallels of Mercury in 23 North 32, right? And you see how close, these two are so close, and this Mercury trigger is, so close, right? This within 25, 27, 32. That's within five or seven minutes of a degree, okay? Now also progressed Venus is 23 north 14. So you have these, these, these um, progressed planets are crossing and releasing the, the, uh, the Sun-Mars uh, parallel. Uh, and now in addition, <laughs> The progressions to the date of the as of the accident. This is the natal sun, progressed planets aspect in the natal sun. Here we have the progressed sun, it's 2137, progressed Mars is 2117. So they're also close parallel by progressing, also, not just in the natal chart, by progression. And you see they they didn't just they aren't just sitting in the same place, they've moved over the life. And then this one is further release, released by the natal ascendant in 2124. And this is all, all uh, fairly close there. So um, the, here's, a, this is the, here's our example that you, you can look at this, you say, well, yeah, there are discords in Leo and so on. And there is, we're, we were looking for Saturn here. Saturn, Saturn is very important in this chart. I mean, Saturn is involved in a T-square it's a, a, a t square to the to the significators um, uh, over here. So um, uh, that that's that's important there. Um, so I, I hope you see the the relevance in this particular chart. The guy the catastrophic accident and there are very dramatic parallels to Mars in the natal chart and the progression um, here. Okay. Now. <clears throat> Uh, there's a, 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 a point here to make. Uh, if we want to identify the areas of stress in medical astrology, the areas of stress in the charts, we're going to look at the discordant aspects. Right? You're going to read them from the discordant aspects. Um, if you leave all the other aspects out and you just had the discordant aspects, for the most part, you could sketch the medical history from the discordant aspects, okay? Um, I didn't start out thinking this way, <laughs> but uh, as I got more and more into charts over the years, this just, this just became very clear. And uh, here is, I'm going to show you here, the discordant aspects, okay? It's a conjunction or a parallel to Saturn or Mars, our discords, okay? Um, I left one out there and in conjunct, to Saturn or Mars would also be uh, would, would be discordant. Uh, opposition by nature discordant, square discordant, semi-square, sesquisquare. Okay. And so review the discordant aspects to find the discords in the house, in the health. And the principle here is net harmony of a planet, right? A planet has, let's just say, <laughs> two discordant aspects and it's on a grand trine, right? Uh, the net har and it, so it adds up being neutral, or it may even add up being the net harmony. It may be mostly harmonious with this discord over there. The, the net harmony or discord will not predict injury or illness, right? This is as we, we would find them in astrodynes, right? The synthesized harmony or discord 
won't predict injury or illness, right? Um, this, the discordant aspect to an overall harmonious planet will still tend to attract corresponding discord in the health. Um, I, uh, I can just speculate that maybe those harmonious aspects <laughs> would help the person overcome it, right? Maybe they, they would, uh, maybe one person will be a cancer survivor and the other one wouldn't. Right, the one with harmonious, but that's we're trying to do the assessment here. We want to find uh, uh, the find uh, the how the how the chart corresponds to the to the history and the presentation in the patient. So, uh, so this is the principle. Um, and uh, here I, I did one set, one of my first research sets uh, some years ago. I took the charts of the presidents of the United States. Okay, um, and. I, I, I wanted, I didn't want to pick a set of charts with particular medical conditions, right? And I wanted to pick a set of charts that wasn't subject to say selection bias. You know, like I could flip through my charts and pick out everybody that had kidney disease, right? But, but, but uh, you know, maybe I'm just picking out the ones that confirm my hypothesis. You know, maybe I'm leaving out the, the outliers that don't do that. So in order to objectify, I said, let me take one set. So I have uh, Doris J. Stone's book, The Presidential Charts of the United States. I said, well, let me use that and look through that. Um, in, uh, so the charts that wasn't selected for medical purposes, it was selected because they were presidents. And I mean, it's a random sample of the kind of things that happen to people. Uh, this, it, it avoids the problem of self-fulfilling selection. The history of illness of the presidents is well recorded. We know what illnesses they had. And uh, we know what illnesses they had when they died, right? And uh, that's, uh, those are important in medical astrology research. If it's uh, the illness they have, somebody may die or not, the, die, the death would have to do with the eighth house, right? But the person still has to have the significators for that disease, right? So um, this is, okay. Now this, this project, there's a weakness in this project from a research point of view, because the birth times of the presidents are usually speculative, right? And uh, so uh, we don't expect, uh, uh, we acknowledge the weakness ahead of time. But uh, here's what, what I found uh, through there. I, with all, all charts where the illness at the time of death was known uh, in uh, uh, Doris uh, Chase Stone's book, Horoscopes of the U.S. Presidents, uh -huh. okay? The source of the disease information is either from Doan or from Wikipedia, right? She didn't always have the health history there, but um, I, I would look them up on Wikipedia and see what else I could find. Um, so each chart was examined for aspects to the sign ruling the anatomical zone of the organ involved or organ involved, okay? And the planetary rulers of that sign, okay? This is how we do our, our chart delineation. And uh, so, and then all, all I did, it was very simple. I didn't uh, synthesize the uh, strength and power and all of that. I just put the number of harmonious or discordant aspects that was involved to that side or its ruler. Okay. Pretty, just basic. I'm just exploring the field here. I, I did this uh, maybe 20 years ago. And uh, here are the results. I found 30 charts in there that met the criteria where we had the information about a disease, okay? And in 29 of those charts, <laughs> discordant aspects to the sign and or its rulers were identified, right? uh, One of the charts did not have a discordant aspect to the, to the uh, sign uh, or its rulers, okay? The number of discordant aspects was greater than the number of harmonious aspects in 26 of the 29 charts, right? The number of discordant aspects was equal uh, to the uh, number of harmonious aspects in one chart, okay? The average number of discordant aspects was 4.6, <laughs> and the average number of harmonious aspects was 1.8, right? So here I would, the, the, the point I'm gonna make, we would do better on the chart to overview, survey, look at the collection of discordant aspects and see where they are in the chart in order to identify areas or zones uh, likely to have a, a, a medical problem there. And <laughs> up here, I have a nice joke about this up here. Uh, there is a tendency, because you always want your research to come out perfect, to say, well, 
you know, this one other chart, well, I can go, I can sort of lose my, my I, I take a, a kind of a, 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 a se mental samurai approach toward not fudging on orbs and being very strict. And I could say, oh, well, maybe in that chart, the birth time was wrong. No, I, my joke is, well, maybe the birth chart wasn't wrong. Maybe astrology only works in 29 out of 30 cases to predict uh, uh, what's going on, <laughs> right? So, uh, okay, all right. Um, this is another set. This is uh, 25 famous athletes. Um, whose careers were ended by a known injury, right? So we're talking about what we're selecting for here. I selected career ending injuries, right? So I'm gonna to wanna to say uh, this has to show as a pretty big discord in the person's natal chart, if it's gonna at one point end their career, okay? And uh, so here I, I did, I selected, I found uh, uh, charts of, career ending uh, athletic injuries. I found 25 charts, okay. I have charts with Mars prominent in the chart. Now, I'm, next slide, I'm gonna talk more about prominence. I use the method of prominence that Albert Benjamin used and CC Zane used, uh, not astrodynes, but uh, certain rules of prominence like a high planet and angular planet, uh, planet with many aspects and so on. But uh, charts, uh, all 25, Mars was prominent in the natal chart. And how many of those charts had at least one discordant natal aspect to Mars? All 25, okay. Uh, chart with a net discord to Mars, right? This would be adding up the harmodynes and the discordines and astrodyne method. Chart with a net discord, 20 of the 25, so not all. And then at the timing, charts with any progression to Mars. Um, and this is... Um, uh, that may have been a harmonious progression, right? But uh, remember, sometimes you have a, a, a discordant potential, right? And sometimes a progression, even if it's a harmonious aspect, it opens up an aerial and adds some intensity to that, and the thing can manifest. It can even be triggered by occasionally by a harmonious aspect. And we see this in the, the, the many uh, delineations uh, that... Uh, the, the Church of Light members did in the, uh, for constants of diseases that sometimes it's a harmonious aspect um, involved. So here, that's just for Mars, okay? And uh, here uh, charts with a discordant aspect for the anatomical sign. Now, some of these people had ankle injuries or knee injuries or elbow injuries or head injuries, right? And uh, so, um, uh, there will be different zones, anatomical zones, ruled by the different signs. And we're going to go in this in, in great detail about those correspondences later. But charts with a discordant aspect, any discordant aspect to the anatomical sign, all 25. Okay. Charts with a net discord in the sign, only 13. Okay. So uh, charts with a, any progression to the sign or the ruler of the sign at the time was all 25. Right. So you can, but, but what we see here in, I like to say, oh, I, I think I have a, a summary um, uh, here. Uh, let's say, well, here, planetary prominence. This is the question for prominence. And uh, from what I could tell, we have the planet ruling the ascendant or a planet conjunct to the ascendant is, is prominent. A planet in an angular house one, four, seven, or 10, or conjunct the midheaven would be prominence. A planet aspecting the sun, the moon, or Mercury. Okay. A planet high in the chart, um, then, or a planet making a close aspect to one or more other planets, an unusually close aspect to one or more other planets becomes important. So you don't have just necessarily one. I'm not identifying the quote ruling planet of the chart. I'm talking about planets that are prominent. Planets that are likely to uh, be dominating the energies of, of that uh, individual. Okay. And uh, uh, so for the injuries, <laughs> uh, all athletes with a career ending uh, <laughs> athletic injury had a prominent Mars natal. Mars in all charts had at least one discordant aspect. All charts had a discordant natal aspect to the sign of the injury or its rulers. 
All charts had a major progression to the sign of the injury or its rulers. Those aspects may have been hard, discordant or harmonious. 20% of the charts had a net harmony to Mars, okay, despite the disc some discordant aspects. And I like this, the, the, the harmonious aspects did not save those individuals from a career-ending injury, right? okay? And uh, about half the individuals had a net harmony in the sign of the injury, right? Despite the discordant aspects. And that net harmony did not prevent the career uh, ending uh, injury there. Okay. So have a have an example here. Um, this time has gone on and almost nobody's heard about Thea Gibson before, but uh, Now, Thea Gibson was the first black athlete to cross the color line of international tennis. Um, she became the first uh, African American to win a Grand Slam title. She won 11 Grand Slam title tournaments, right, including five singles titles, five doubles, and one mixed doubles. Um, this man, uh, uh, Bob uh, Ryland, uh, a uh, uh, a tennis uh, champion himself and the former coach of Venus and Serena Williams basically said that she's one of the greatest players who ever lived. I think she would beat the Williams sisters, right? So she's a remarkable athlete. Um, and uh, in the early 60s, I just, in her spare time, she became the first black player to complete, compete on the women's professional golf tour. Right? So um, uh, remarkable athlete. We would expect to see, you know, athletic things there. And, um, I think in uh, later, we're going to go deeper into her chart. I want to go into uh, a certain aspect of this. Um, she, uh, toward the end of her life, she had strokes and cerebral hemorrhages, right? Uh, you know, maybe uh, this is a very common way that we get, that humans in the modern world get sick when we get old, we get heart attacks, we get cancer, we get strokes. Those are the three most common things that happen. So, this is um, this isn't like this ended her career, and it's at this toward the end of her life, you know. Uh, uh, yeah, but so, and this is one thing I want to say when when you look at um, at the chart, or you look at your own chart, and you see something scary in there, you think, well, well, that just might be the way I die when I'm eighty-two, you know, or <laughs> or ninety, right? You do, you don't have to be a walk around in trepidation of, of what it's going to do, and you can you can take measures also, but. What we want for a stroke, what you want for a stroke is the brain is ruled by Aries, right? And to the nervous system is ruled by Mercury, right? So the brain itself would be ruled by Aries and the functioning of the brain would be ruled by Mercury. Um, when I, I originally was... Uh, researching strokes and I found that, well, in every, every case, I was looking at mercury for brain function and in, in almost every case, <clears throat> yeah, every case, mercury was involved, right, for, for strokes. And uh, then I went back and reread our lessons, <laughs> C.C. Zane, and he said that uh, Aries or Mars is involved, you know, Aries and then Mars as its rulers. So I went back and yes, indeed, they all had Mercury involved and they all had Aries or Mars involved. Right? So um, I just hadn't seen it on my first pass through there. So um, we're looking for something here, uh, stress, a discordant aspect in Aries or to Mars. Okay. Uh, now, particularly with a stroke, uh, and then Mercury for the nervous system. She was eventually paralyzed. And so Neptune for paralysis. And um, uh, when somebody actually has a stroke, it's an arterial disease, right? It's an artery. So the, the arteries in the brain, they're ruled by, by, um, by, by Aries, but arteries are ruled by Jupiter, right? So you, this is, uh, Jupiter is one of the significators in strokes and heart attacks because they're arterial diseases. And then they're very sudden strokes and heart attacks. They're very sudden. So you have Uranus there, Uranus and Jupiter. Now, this is all just straight from our, our, our constants that's in our literature um, and or, um, yeah, constants there. So we're going to look here. And so what do we look? We'll, we'll look for if we start looking for Mars first, right? We come over here. 
Mars is the weakest planet in the chart. Right? It's over in the, in the 12th house. It's weak. It uh, makes a, a, a sextile over here. And, but, and then it only has a, a parallel aspect to the, to the ascendant. And so we don't see Mars as really prominent in the chart or Mars as, as, um, as look like it would be a major discord that would be uh, responsible for a stroke. Uh, we do have this, we call this an aerial. There is a connection there with either parallel between Mars and the ascendant, right? So even though the Mars is weak. But if we come over here now to Aries, now here we go, oh my goodness, there's our Jupiter and our Uranus, right? In Aries, we were looking for Jupiter and Uranus. Oh my goodness, and they're opposite the ascendant, right? So here, there's a stressor there. And they're... Um, uh, uh, and there's a square, uh, uh, square up here to the midheaven. If we get up there, and um, so uh, there's more to see in this chart that we're going to see later. But um, so here we have uh, this, these two plants. This is going to be the key to what's happening in her her head. And um, this is also the focal point of a grand trine, right? So uh, this this is this remember this this person is an athletic champion, unusually skilled athletic champion. We expect to see some very powerful harmonies uh, in, her, in her chart. So here, so we have these two planets. This is going to be key to the stroke, possible Mars contribution over here. And but this powerful stressors here in a, a, a big harmony there. And uh, so, uh, okay, now let's see, what do we get next? If we look at the synthesized harmony there, so we have a T-square and a grand trine focusing on one planet. If we look at the synthesized harmony, over here, we would get that uh, uh, Mars, right? Uh, as far as percent of, of power, Mars is the weakest planet in the chart, okay? Mars has some discordant aspect to it, some harmonious aspect to it. There's a net harmony, okay? If we look at Aries, right? Remember, Aries is the focus of both a T square and a, a grand trine. Uh, uh, Aries is um, yeah, medium power, but it's the most harmonious sign, right? So you, if you're going to <laughs> come into this Astrodyne chart here, and you're going to say, you're going to say here, oh, this person, maybe they're going to have kidney disease or stomach disease or breast cancer or something like that from these signs. You would never predict from the synthesized harmonies here that this person would have a, a cerebral hemorrhage in, the, in their brain. Right? So this is the most harmonious sign. Okay, And this doesn't stand out at all. So, so my point is, you can't look at an astrodyne grid and predict what's going to have what's the prominent things are going to be in the medical history and i'm going to show you an alternative here this this is the same chart it's the same person the same information but uh, i just did this for demonstration purposes i just put uh, colored in the blocks on all the discordant aspects with red okay okay and then the harmonious ones i put there in green and uh, the neutral ones i left neutral and uh, I guess I, I should have um, colored some of those in, but the point is, now come over here, if you look at it this way, constants, Aries or Mars for the brain, okay? We're gonna say, well, there's Mars. Well, there's not much going on with Mars, but here we have, have Jupiter and Uranus in Aries. And oh, I see, yes, there's a discordant standing out there. Uranus, a discord is standing out there. Um, the, uh, okay. Uh, uh, Mercury, uh, you don't have much going up on here with Mercury, but over here you have uh, uh, this, you're going to find in a minute, this, that Mercury is sitting halfway between the midheaven and the ascendant in his semi-square to each <laughs> on there. Um, and we're going to talk about that kind of aspect uh, later. And then here we have, have Neptune. Come down here, to, there's Neptune square to Saturn. That's that's pretty serious, uh, pretty serious uh, aspect for for medical indications, and then the Neptune is also over here. It's semi square to Pluto and the midheaven and the ascendant. And uh, I'm going to uh, show you uh, what that looks like in the chart. So I'm I'm going to go back up a minute. Um, I think I am. No. 
there, you see if I am looking at if I'm looking at this, I can't I can't predict what's going on. If I come over here and I look for the discords, that starts to point the way to, to what's going on with the health there. So this is one of the learning objectives for today. It was we're going to look at, at, at discordant aspects and uh, not at synthesized uh, harmony uh, or discords. Okay. Now I mentioned I had the, the my large collection of, of charts. The um, I think I had and have about 120 individuals in there, but. Um, um, most of them have two or three or more conditions. So I have about 250 conditions in their charts. And um, this is where uh, uh, conditions that of my database, conditions that had a sign or a ruler, every condition doesn't, you can't always assign it to a, lo a location. Um, but 199 charts had a sign or a ruler and the natal sign natal sign or ruler has a discordant aspect 100% of them right we're going to look for discords here okay conditions with disease constants uh, no all our diseases we haven't identified constants so this is based on cc zane and i made a few little modifications to that okay this is constants to the disease with any discord in the natal chart all of them had that okay uh, conditions with a known progression date um, was 180. Any progress discord, now in this case, it wasn't any progression, any progress discord to the sign of the ruler was all 180 at that. And then uh, conditions uh, with a, a known conditions, well, constants with a known progress date, uh, 233 out of 234 of those had a progress discord to a constant. Okay, so here. Mixed harmonies and discords. We have to think about the significant. In our hermetic model, the, the, uh, we call them the thought cells. These are the areas in the deep unconscious mind, right? They're conditioned by our past existences, right? And uh, certain areas, one may have to do with aggressive urges, and that would correspond to Mars. Safety urges would correspond to Saturn. A significance, a sun, and so on, that we have these in, in, inside us deep in the unconscious mind. Why do they call it unconscious? Because you don't have access to it. Right? It's unconscious. It's in there. But you can see its effect. So this is our model that the conditioning of these, these uh, uh, centers, these energy centers that correspond to planetary energies and that can be activated by planetary energies and aroused by planetary energies, they may attract more discordant or more harmonious uh, aspects, right? Depending on previous conditioning and whatever we've done since birth. Now, so uh, the point is here, a thought cell in, in the unconscious mind that has both discordant and harmonious aspects will have conditioning that will attract both discordant and harmonious events, right? So we would think about that. So this is why I, mean, I mentioned the person had, person has, <laughs> uh, you know, a little bit of discord here and a lot of harmony. The harmony didn't erase the discord. That person is conditioned to attract and experience the result of that discord. Okay. So, okay. And one of the reasons here is they may or may not occur simultaneously, right? Like the discord maybe <laughs> triggered uh, one year and then the harmony another year. Right, so, okay. Um, these can be assessed. You can assess these with a little bit of work with the aspect grid, okay? Um, it's a little more work uh, to assess those for signs and houses um, from the aspect grid, the way I showed it. It's a little harder to, to collect everything in Aries and start to add up all the money, all the, um, all the numbers. And uh, so this is this is just a hint to whoever may be listening. It would be useful to have an astrodyne printout that would list both discordines and harmodines as well as their synthesized sums. Okay, and then you could very quickly glance down the discordant aspects and and see see their uh, relative uh, discords of those. Okay. All right. I'm going to move on now. We talk about 
semi-square and sesquiquadrate, sesquiquadrate. This is uh, 45 degrees and 135 degree uh, aspects. And what I call aggravated discords. So I will uh, explain completely what I mean by that. Um, and we'll be using that term for the delineations for over the rest of the course. And this, this square is aggravated, we'll say. Okay. Um, here, this is from our basic hermetic uh, model. A semi-square is uh, 45 degrees. Okay. The key word for that is friction, right? Two things rubbing together, right? Uh, and then a, a sesquisquare, the key word is agitation, right? And I'd like to say, you know, I study, you study health and disease and pathology, right? And something like friction <laughs> can be very, very relevant to health and disease. Something in there isn't working right, and things are 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 there's uh, there's friction or agitation. Something is agitated, right? So these can be um, that's uh, anyway either aspect, and this is very important. Please listen to what I'm saying. Either aspect can signify by itself a major illness, right? Either natally or by uh, a progression a major illness all by itself without requiring any other reinforcement. And I'll show you uh, an example um, in here. And here we see um, the semi-square, it's half a square. Uh, this is, uh, I guess, three quarters of an opposition <laughs> or half of the next square. And uh, uh, the orbs are significant for these in our, in our hermetic astrology. These are... Uh, Angular sun or moon, six degrees for 45 uh, uh, or 135 degree aspect. Um, I haven't done any research on trying to narrow that orb or see if, you know, see if that was too wide or too low. Um, I really believe our, our, our forebears in the 20th century did a lot of that work and came up with these uh, orbs uh, and used them in chart after chart after chart. And so, but uh, here we have even, even a cadence, uh, planet, sun or moon, it's, it's, it can be fairly significant uh, with there. So these are, are common. This is a wider orb than we see, say, for instance, a semi-sextile uh, on that. Okay. And uh, okay. Now here, I'm going to bring up the, the idea of a, an aggravated discordant aspect. It's, this would be a discordant aspect, say a square or an opposition that has a 45 degree or 135 degree aspect to the two ends of it, right? Or to both ends of it. And which basically that opposition or square can become much more malefic, can become much more discordant if, if it has this kind of friction or agitation setting it off. And uh, to, to make my point, we know uh, we have here an opposition, right? And this is very commonly, we recognize this in astrology, two planets are opposite, but a third planet is trying to one end and sextile to the other. And this is a very beneficial, right? Because you, <laughs> you get some energy and some tension uh, from the opposition, but then there's a way to use it. It can be channeled in a certain direction, right? That adds harmony to both ends. And I like to say, this is like, these two people are locked in enmity together and a diplomat comes along, right? Who has friendly relations with both of them and can come along and make peace, right? You can tend to quiet down the opposition to remove some of that, drain some of that energy into a harmonious channel. And we recognize this, we see this in astrology all the time. Now, I have never seen or heard anyone describe this next pattern, okay, this is an opposition with a planet that's semi-square to one and sesquisquare to the other end, right? Okay, now why I, I call this an, an aggravated opposition is because these two planets are in enmity, right? There's a tension between them and this one comes along and ignites them, <laughs> irritates them, agitates them, right, and can add significant discord to that opposition, right, okay. Um, 
Okay. Now, I, I didn't initially, this, these emerged. I, I took my, my, my uh, you know, I did my initial project uh, uh, three years ago was to take a hundred charts and look at them. And I just started uh, seeing these emerging chart after chart, after chart, after chart, after chart, right? You were seeing a hundred, uh, the uh, semi-square and the sesquiquare prominent, but also prominent in this kind of configuration. Or I'm going to show you the other configurations. I've seen all these other configurations. I've seen them in. Here we, we would have a square. Okay. D there's a square. Here, what about this? Uh, th the third planet is semi-square to both ends of the square. Right? So I call this an, an aggravated square. Um, and Okay. Here's another one, a square. And the planet here is semi-square to one end and sesquisquare to the other. Okay. Here is um, a square. We should have names for these, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> I don't know what we would call this, the arrow of, the arrow of discord or, or something like that. You have a square and then the third planet is sesquisquare to both ends of that. Right? Um, and uh, each one of these I've seen more than once in, in our, our common set. This is a related one. This has also has a planet here. So you have an opposition and a square that are arranged in such a way that there's semi-squares here and sesquisquares there. Um, and uh, okay. This one, uh, I guess something like origami or something, but uh, we have, uh, this is a grand cross with a planet over here aggravating all four ends of the grand cross okay all right this opposition with a square in this way okay and then you have all these aggravating uh, aspects there um, i promise you if this looks strange i promise you we're going to be seeing these throughout the whole rest of the course when we put charts of people with with, uh, with known conditions up there okay this would be a, a uh, one of the nice ones. Sometimes you can have a, have two oppositions, but then the ends of them are trines and sextiles. And those are really, really dynamic. But here you would have uh, two oppositions, but the ends there are semi-squares and sesquiquares. Uh, this is a very, very uh, discordant uh, aspect. Um, so let's come back here to Althea Gibson, okay? Remember, I didn't put everything in the initial one. I was trying to sh show the focus on Aries and Mars. So here we have, this was the original. She has this T-square. Is These planets are, are opposite the ascendant, the square uh, to the midheaven. And she has this an, another square. This other square is overlaid in there. This square is from Saturn to Neptune. This is one of the, the deep discords in her chart. That's a very discordant aspect. And uh, remember, we were looking for an affliction to Neptune for paralysis, right? And uh, so here, this, this Saturn is, is a square to the Neptune, but it's also a sesquiquadrate to the planet up here, okay? Um, and then uh, also, so, okay, so this square is superimposed over that T-square, in such a way <laughs> that you have a, a new set of semi-squares there. And you have um, here the uh, Neptune uh, is, the, you have a square uh, here from, I believe the square, the square is from the ascendant to the midheaven. And you have Neptune is very precisely in the middle and it's semi-square to each end of that, right? And so then it also involves Saturn down here. So there you can see the dotted lines here are all in the in my presentations. They're all going to be the semi-squares and the sesquiquadrates. And you can see this is not this, these are these are very aggravating in, in this particular uh, thing. It adds to the discord. Okay. Oops. Okay. Here's a, this is a, a case from our Albert Benjamin. This is a, 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 a he tells this story uh, in one of our lessons. And uh, he tells the story, he says, uh, well, he says, I enjoyed 
very good health. And at one point, he says, I was hospitalized with a serious and life-threatening condition. It occurred in 1945. And he was sick enough that he had to be carried to the hospital from his home on a stretcher. Uh, the stories related in our lessons with the story of how his pet dog became aware of his recovery from a distance when the disease crisis had passed while he was in the hospital. I don't know if you all remember the story there in the lessons. Um, and uh, so, uh, but this is the quote, what he said when he's relating the story, he said, even those customarily alert are at times caught napping. <laughs> he's referring to himself. Oops. Um, and he relates and says he failed to take note and take precautions for an adverse aspect in his progressions, right? It was there in his progression. He failed to take note. He overlooked it. Uh, and the aspect, he tells us what the aspect was. The aspect was a progressed sesquiquadrate from the planet Mars, okay? Released by a progression to the moon and reinforced by modern progressions, right? So... Here we have, he's, he's telling us the story. I'll show you the details. He's telling us the story. He overlooked the significance of a sesquiquadrate and ended up being carried to the hospital in a stretcher. Okay, so yeah, I'm sure he passed along that story for a reason that we not overlook the significance of sesquiquadrates when we're assessing medical astrology. Okay, and here we have, this is the, the actual case. Uh, here is his his chart in, in the natal chart, in the natal chart here, uh, we do have uh, uh, the, the natal chart. We have Uranus is in the 10th uh, and Uranus is square. There's a, a pretty close Mars Uranus square uh, here in the natal chart. It is all, it's a T square, Mars, Jupiter, Uranus. And uh, up here, a focal point of that T square. So here, uh, this is the, he says, this is the aspect he overlooked, was progressed Mars, Sesca quadrate to Uranus. Okay, 22 to 22, yeah. Progressed Mars, Sesca quadrate to progressed Uranus. He's, this is the one he said, I failed to take note of that and appreciate its significance. And, and then uh, this was, he, he, uh, he, he mentioned progressed Mars, semi-square natal and progressed Uranus, released by the progressed moon. This is what he said, released by the progressed moon is, um, uh, sorry, I think I, yeah, the progressed moon is, uh, the, this is the tension is building up along that progression. The progressed moon uh, squares the Mars end and has a Cisco quadrate to the, to the Uranus end. Um, uh, to to release to release that, um, I will point out he he did not mention, but I looked deeper into his chart. He, uh, if you look at the progressions, he is uh, we're looking for Mars. He was very very sick, sudden illness, goes to the hospital with an acute illness, life threatening. Okay, and uh, progressed Jupiter is contra parallel Mars R. Progressed Mars is parallel to the moon, is parallel to progressed MC, and progressed Mars is parallel to progressed Venus, right? So he also, in addition to this, he had a number of, uh, of progressed uh, aspects to Mars, which he probably overlooked also, along with the sesquiquadrate. And I'm including this chart tonight because the th themes of the class are don't ignore parallels and don't ignore semi-squares and sesquiquadrates. And here, this, this chart is... Uh, is a, a demonstration uh, of that. Uh, okay. This is a case. This is a a, uh, a case. This is a seventy-year-old male. He has the sudden onset of fever. Onset of fever. No other symptoms. There's no cough. No diarrhea. <laughs> no abdominal symptoms. No musculoskeletal symptoms. Right. And. Uh, the, uh, the fever wa was persistent, it lasted for days. And on the fifth day, he ended up dehydrated uh, with uh, electrolyte imbalance and cardiac arrhythmia, had to be taken to the hospital in an ambulance and they had to reestablish his heart rhythm and ran electrical shock. Right. This isn't quite the, 
oh, give me the paddles, boom, you know, like that. This is, they did, they do use the paddles, but when people have what's called atrial fibrillation, they'll give a shock to reestablish the normal rhythm. And that's what he had to have done. Okay. In uh, over the uh, next week, he had five trips to the emergency room and three days in the hospital. Okay. So you can see this is a very significant illness. <laughs> um, and while he's in the hospital and over the next weeks, over the next number of weeks, medical tests ruled out any known physical medical cause. They said, this is not due to an infection. You don't have a virus. You don't have a bacteria. <laughs> you don't have a fungus. It's not cancer. You don't have a malignancy. It's not autoimmune, right? It's a medical mystery. And the doctors told him this just happens sometimes. It happens a lot in these cases that we never find out what it is, right? And so after about two weeks of steady fever, the uh, fever began to subside after about two weeks, but it was present part of the daily cycle. He had been going to fever every afternoon and evening for a full nine weeks. It was nine weeks before the fever went away. They never found out what it was. Um, no cause was determined. And, and because he was uh, so uh, bedridden, he had profound weakness. He lost about 10 pounds of muscle mass and had trouble uh, walking because his, his, uh, his gluteus maximus muscles had completely atrophied, right? So um, this is, see, this is major, major, this is a serious, serious illness there. Okay, here's, here's the chart, okay. We're looking here, it's a fever. We're going to look at Mars. Okay, <laughs> what's the Mars? What's Mars in the natal chart? Mars in the natal chart here is the weakest planet in the chart. Okay, it's in a succedent house. It only has two very, uh, very weak aspects. It, it has a nice trine to the sun, but it's pretty weak, right? And it has a, a very wide square to Jupiter. Um, and uh, I have this here as a theoretical, um, uh, uh, possibly there's a 135 degree aspect there, depending on the orb you use. So, but um, I, we're not, we're not gonna claim that. And uh, so, uh, but uh, this, this, is, this is the picture. And what I wanna say when we think about this chart, I'm gonna tell you the way I think about this chart and Mars is the weakest planet, okay? Uh, we want to see, in this case, I call it, this is an upper octave illness, right? This is something from Pluto or Neptune or from the, from the beyond. This, the doctor said there's no physical cause of this illness. This is coming from the inner planes. The discord is coming from the inner planes causing this. This is why I'm looking for in this chart, something to uh, the upper octave uh, uh, planets uh, to be prominent. Um, now he does have in uh, this particular chart, I read this chart, Pluto is the most prominent planet in the chart. It's the most angular. Um, it uh, aspects the sun, uh, the sun by uh, sesquiquadrate. It trans Mercury, it trans Jupiter, it sextiles Neptune, and it's sesquiquadrate to, uh, to the moon over there. It's a, a strong, it's a, a, a conjunction there to Saturn. So this is extremely prominent in the, in the chart there. Okay, so we do natally, we really can't quite find a, a reason why this person would have a prolonged fever at some time in their life, but with that, but here's the, the Pluto is there. Okay, uh, Saturn, we're looking for Saturn because of the severity of the disease and the wasting, the person wasted, his tissue wasted away during the time. Uh, Saturn, uh, the ruler of the ascendant, is conjunct to Pluto, square the midheaven. Uh, both of these have, a, have net harmony, uh, uh, but as I mentioned, and it's a theme here, net harmony won't save you from the discords that, that uh, it, these are conditioned to attract. Okay. Uh, so here's more. This is what's happening. This is what actually happened to um, uh, when, uh, when this uh, event occurred. Uh, and these are the progressions to the week that the, the fever was sudden onset and uh, it, uh, the week that it was a sudden onset and he went into the hospital that week. These are the progressions, okay? And the key thing happening here is the progressed Venus here in 20 of Aries 31 is 
sesquiquadrate to that Mars. Okay. And this is the 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 only progression to that Mars, other than we're going to see some parallels in a minute. Right? This is the only progression. This in the same way that a sesquiquadrate put Albert Benjamin in the hospital, right? <laughs> a sesquiquadrate here put this guy in the hospital with a fever. That, that's, the, that's the piece. And then over here, now this is a transit. This is transiting Pluto. Um, now, we don't count uh, transits as producing major life events. Uh, they usually prevent more minor life events. You can start getting in the borderline when you have very slow moving planets. But here, basically over here, Pluto is a transit that is releasing the discord of this sesquiquadrate. Uh, and here the Pluto is sesquiquadrate to Mars <laughs> and square to Venus. And I'd like you to look at the degrees and minutes here, right? <laughs> uh, Venus, 2031, Mars, 531. That's to the minute, 135 degrees away. And Pluto releasing it 2031. It's to the minute uh, square, not just to the degree, it's to the minute square to this and Sesco quadrate to that when uh, this was, was released. Okay. Okay. Uh, I uh, have a, this, uh, I was first looking at this chart. I, uh, I really didn't think the Sesco quadrate could be the, this could, could be the, the issue until I saw Pluto over there. But I was looking over here, I was very much distracted. Well, look at this, this 2226 Saturn and progressed Mars is 2333. Well, that's almost one degree, right? And here, oh, I, the temptation here is to say, oh yeah, here we, uh, th this, this must be it, right? And so maybe we should just just fudge that degree and make him a little closer right and if i if i had done that i wouldn't have continued to look and it wouldn't have seen this other deeper pattern which is very significant here so um i uh d i encourage people don't shorten your orbs be very strict with your orbs don't don't get uh, uh, uh lazy about that okay uh okay here is what do we have this is the fever of unknown origin i'd like to also bring out the parallels, okay? Here's the parallels. Here we have uh, progressed ascendant, okay? The ascendant is progressed to uh, parallel to progressed Mars, right? Uh, well, if you think about this, this would be kind of, if it's analogous to a conjunction, we wouldn't be surprised if the progressed ascendant was progressed at conjunct progressed Mars, we wouldn't be surprised that a person had a fever, right? Okay, so, all right. And uh, then here, we also progressed Mars is contraparallel to the natal midheaven. So again, I'm, uh, yeah, progressed Mars, contraparallel to the progressed midheaven. We wouldn't be surprised if someone had a progressed Mars conjunct the midheaven that they had a fever, okay? And uh, progressed Mercury contra parallel to uh, Mars <laughs> natal, Radix. And then uh, over here, we have progressed Uranus is, uh, we're, we're dealing with Pluto here, progressed Uranus is parallel to Pluto R. Look at the minutes here. 23, 22, 23, 22, just exact, right? So this is something very powerfully Plutonian going on here. <laughs> and uh, the, this would be uh, one, this one of the indicators uh, re releasing that, okay? All right. So um, this is the, th the theme of the evening, 45 degree, 135 degree in parallels, right? If you, in these three cases, if you weren't using those, you wouldn't be able to identify the issues in the chart. You, you would not. Um, uh, in, in the larger study, in the, the larger uh, study, the whole, whole database study, uh, total conditions of individuals, I, had, I think I had about 120 individuals, 251 conditions, okay? And charts where a semi-square or a sesquiquadrate 
to a natal or progressed rulers or constants was present in that disease, 241 out of 251, okay? So here, I'll just say it again. If you're not using these aspects, you won't be able to practice medical astrology, okay? Now here, uh, a major discordant aspect, I mentioned that we have the major aspect, the opposition square, right? A major discordant aspect aggravated by semi-square or sesquisquare complex to the natal or progressed rulers or con concepts. Those were all the diagrams I gave was 194 out of 251 had those aggravated configurations in there. Okay? So that was 77% of the charts had oppositions or squares that were aggravated by planets being uh, sesquiquadrate and semi-square to various aspects of those. Okay? And uh, this is, uh, and this is uh, for this evening. Uh, this is what I have. <laughs> and uh, next week, we're going to go into Hermetic uh, Astrology Science Correspondences. Okay. And uh, I can, we, can be, we can close and I can be uh, open for uh, questions, comments, and discussions. Sorry, Paul. Did you want to stop the recording? Yes, uh-huh. Thank you.